Beowulf is an anonymous epic poem, the finest example that remains of the old English epic tradition interrupted by the Norman conquest in 1066. Written about 6th century figures and composed sometime between the middle of the 7th and the end of the 10th centuries, the poem is preserved only in an 11th century handwritten book known as Cotton Vitellius. The manuscript, which currently resides in the British Museum, is somewhat damaged, having narrowly escaped destruction in a fire in 1731. In the legend, the Sild dynasty was founded by the Danish king Sild Skeffing. Sent out to sea as an infant, Sild became a great king, ruled gloriously, died with honor, and received a magnificent burial at sea. Generations later, one of Sild's descendants, King Hrothgar, built Hirot, a great gabled hall. Infuriated by the rejoicing in the hall, the monster Grendel, of the race of Cain, attacked it and terrorized Hirot for twelve years. Beowulf, the nephew of King Hygelac of the Geats, in present-day Sweden, came to Hrothgar's aid. Once thought slack, Beowulf had become a formidable hero, with the strength of thirty men in his grasp. Vowing to conquer the monster or die, he and his fourteen companions settled into the hall for the night. When the monster arrived, he devoured one of Beowulf's men before Beowulf grabbed him. After a ferocious wrestling match, Beowulf ripped off Grendel's arm, and the mortally wounded monster fled from the hall and back to the moors. That day, the Danes rejoiced. That night, Grendel's mother emerged from the fens, swamps, snatched up one of the king's chief advisers and her son's arm, which had been hung up as a trophy, and retreated again to her lair. Death of Grendel with the king and chosen warriors, Beowulf made the nightmarish journey to the pool where Grendel's mother lurked. Beowulf plunged into the pool and was nearly killed. Just as the she-monster sat on her guest and prepared to stab him, Beowulf snatched up an ancient, magical sword and killed her. When Beowulf cut off Grendel's head, the blade of the sword melted. Taking the golden hilt and the monster's head, Beowulf swam back to the surface, where he celebrated. He returned home to King Hygelac and a hero's welcome. King Beowulf After the deaths of King Hygelac and his son, Herdred, Beowulf became king and ruled the Geats for fifty years. Toward the end of his reign, a dragon's horde was robbed by a slave, and the dragon rose, setting the countryside on fire, and retrieving its horde. Ordering an iron shield made, Beowulf set out with eleven men for the dragon's lair. But Beowulf vowed to take on the dragon himself. Feeling his end approaching, Beowulf reviewed his life story, saying farewell to his men. The battle went against the hero. All of his men fled except for young Vigla, who defended the king. Together, he and Beowulf destroyed the dragon, but Beowulf was mortally wounded. He ordered Vigluf to take the treasure out of the cave, thanked God that he had been able to win it, ordered his burial mound, gave Vigluf his battle gear, and died. The poem ends with the Geats throwing the dragon's body into the sea, burning Beowulf on a great pyre, and building his burial mound. There they also buried the treasure, which was as useless then as it always had been from the time the dragon gathered it. Twelve warriors rode around the mound, bemoaning the loss of their lord, whom they called the gentlest of men and the most gracious, the most kindly to his people, and the most eager to win fame. Tradition and Language As compared to the Iliad and the Odyssey, both written hundreds of years later, Beowulf is relatively short. Like the Greek epics, it is heroic and deals with the noble class. But where the Greeks regard Olympian intervention as a relatively regular, if often unwelcome, occurrence in epics, the Old English tradition fuses Teutonic, or Germanic, fatalism with Christianity. In Beowulf, life is a struggle between humans and monsters, among people, or between humankind and the environment. A hero can win the struggle as long as his will is strong and his word, or destiny, does not decree otherwise. Any victories, however, except for the gaining of a good name, are temporary because life is alane, or transitory. Some of the characters in the poem, such as Hygelac, Beowulf's king, and Hrothgar, the Danish king, are mentioned in other sources, such as the work of Gregory of Tours, who dates Hygelac's raid into the Frankish territory to 521 CE. 
Subsequent mentions occur in Saxo Grammaticus Danish History and Snorri Sturluson's Heimskringla, the Icelandic collection of sagas, as well as the Anglo Saxon Chronicle, a collection of historic records of events in British history. Old English poetry originally was composed and recited by a Scot, a performer who sang epics at important ceremonies and festivals. By the time Beowulf actually was written down, however, it had probably gone through several centuries of recitation. The evidence for this lies in the fact that the language of the written version includes not just West Saxon forms but other regional elements as well, such as Anglian, Mercian, Kentish, and Northumbrian. The language is both archaic and noble. The work begins with hey, the Old English equivalent of once upon a time. The reader is taken back into misty history, where historic personages coexisted with monsters and dragons' lairs.